Okay, here we go. At least for the time being, the final episode that I'm making. This is episode eight. We're going to talk about final balance checking and we're going to talk about automation as well. But interesting start to this in that I've had to make some changes because small alterations that we've been doing actually had a big impact on the stereo out track. So all that reverb that we've added through the reverb bus, it meant that we were actually clipping um, in our, our favourite moment, uh, a couple of seconds in on, on the snare track. Um, here it comes. Okay, so that one there pushed us to minus 1.6. Um, now it was actually, it was above zero. Um, so I've, uh, I've reined the snare trap back in. So just uh, a very important point here. Always keep an eye on your levels overall. Uh, because we don't want clipping. Clipping is not okay. We don't want that at any point. It means distortion. It means that sound effectively does not exist as far as the computer is concerned. So it's not going to be a quality product. Now, we talked earlier about automation and I mentioned that I thought I was probably going to apply it to the bass track and I absolutely am. The reason for that is because because of the of the of the differences um, in the different sections. There's a lot more bass in the um, in the verse than there is in the chorus. And if I remember rightly, that's because you actually leveled down the bass in the middle of the recording. So that's why we've got quite a lot of bass in the verse. chorus it's a little bit more muted and actually if you really do look into that you can see yeah you can see the moment look where it's been turned down um, I'm not sure that that's actually a particularly great uh, recording technique leveling on the fly like that but uh, anything we can do something about it so I'm going to get rid of the mixer for this because I don't need it and I'm going to zoom right into the bass track so I've got a nice clear display of what's going on. So automation, nice and straightforward, press A. And automation is where you're giving the door a set of instructions for it to do every single time to change something. So the simplest type of automation is volume automation. You can automate all sorts of things. You can automate EQ changes, you can automate pan you can automate all kinds of things but we're going to do volume so volume is selected which is great and if i click on here then the 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 line will activate and you can see that we are as it stands we're leveled at naught point naught now the reason for that is because we added the the gain plugin later uh sorry earlier and uh so that means that we've we've got the gain that we want that's still maintained around 0.0, .0. that's my my preferred way of, of doing things so i need to go in just a little bit more here okay and what i want is i want more bass for this chorus so i'm going to click in here and i'm also going to click in here and these are automation points right these are points where we can um, adjust so if I put another one in here then you can see straight away I can increase by let's try two initially and one of the nice things about logic is you put two over the top of each other it will line them up for you which is nice okay there we go It's good, but it's not enough. Probably going to be too much, but what the hell, go with it for the time being. That's more like it. Now we've got some nice bass um, in the chorus. But again, you might decide you want less bass. You want less, more bass. You want more bass in a different place. It's entirely up to you how you would um, explore that. Entirely up to you. And the thing I would say about automation is less is more. Now what I mean by that is I have seen on projects made by you guys 
in the past. I'm going to mess this up on purpose. I've seen things like this. Okay, so that is a crazy amount of automation, right? It's happening over almost no time at all. And we're talking about tiny, 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 tiny changes. Okay, so you are not going to hear changes of one or two decibels over that kind of range. Now, this one here, it's a five decibel change. It's quite a change. And it's very clear up and then down at the end of the chorus. All right, now, I might need to finesse the, uh, the exact points a little bit. I sort of... Um, guess them but this no 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 keep your automation nice and simple because quite simply you're not going to hear this <laughs> you're not going to hear it you're not going to hear anything at all um, so don't do these crazy crazy changes um, the only exception to that would be if you're doing a sort of a very exposed section where you want to include crescendos and diminuendos, that's getting louder and getting softers um, on, on acoustic instruments, on winds, brass, that kind of thing. But just don't do it in, in, in that way. Um, so yeah, automation. Of course, what do we need to do? We need to take a screenshot. We need to write it up. So. terrible today but unlike you guys I'd actually bother go back and correct it oh it's too big I had already noticed that the bass was louder in the verses than it was in the chorus. This seemed odd until I remembered that when we were recording, we deliberately turned down the gain in the chorus. Bit of analysis. This had caught me out earlier because I had applied a gain plugin to boost the chorus, which then in turn made the verse much too loud. To get around this issue, I needed to use volume automation. So I activated the DAT and created automation points to automatically, there's a word, adjust the volume. Be specific by plus 5 dB for the chorus section. This gave a much more pleasing end result. Okay, and like I said, you may do way more automation than that. In fact, you probably should. You might decide that you know some of your double tracks need. Uh, changing volumes or some of your drum parts uh, you might just want to level down that one bit where um, that one particularly hard snare strike at the beginning you might want to get rid of that for example using automation there are endless possibilities this is your project right and you should be pushing yourselves to do as much as you can the other thing that I will say more about in class and is very important is that you should be comparing your mix to the original mix of Alison and or other cover versions which are available to you commercially. 
So we'll talk in class about what that actually sounds like, but it does mention in your assignment brief that comparing to the original would be beneficial. So you can talk about how your mix is different or similar to the original ones. What you would do at this point, of course, is you would go back and you would do your final balance. So actually, I'm, I'm quite happy with mine at the moment, even though I've been working quite quickly and it's a, it's a bit of a rough cut in many ways. But overall, the balance is quite good. But you might go back and you might decide, oh, I don't know, well, I need less vocal or whatever it may be. That final balance can be done to a point using the faders on the mixer. OK, so we're talking probably small adjustments here. If you need it for a specific part, then use automation, of course. But if we're just talking in general, then use the faders on the mixer. OK, so you should have, if you've reached this point of the video, I realise they are quite long, but I hope they've been exceptionally useful for you. And you should have a nice, balanced, well-mixed track. And you should also have a very, very comprehensive blog that goes along with it. And that's the first assignment in this unit pretty much complete.